Hello. <clears throat> Welcome to Verbling. Hi there. Teacher Oakley here. Okay. It's time to get your brain in gear. Time to use your noodle. We are going to, uh, we're going to try to figure out some riddles and brain teasers from some generally easy ones, maybe some classics and some really mind-bending brain teasers. Really, what I'm more interested in than anything is having you guys practice your English by telling me uh, a riddle or a brain teaser. Uh, okay, I'll get us started, but um, we'll, we'll see what you, you guys start thinking about a brain teaser or a riddle, you know. Now, you'll see what I mean anyway, so, okay, brain teasers or riddles are tricky, please on words or tricky, bless you, bless you, my goodness, um, tricky, tricky mm, mind equations, sometimes mathematical, sometimes plays a play on words, maybe even idiomatic they can be interesting and fun, I hope. Uh, welcome to the class, Andrew. Hello. How are you doing? Hi. Hi. Are you both Andrew? Mm, well, my name is Alex. Uh, Alex. Okay. I'm from Russia. Hi, Alex. From Russia. Okay. Hi. And, uh, you know, you should take care of that cold. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very cold. Yeah. I can tell. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, I'll take care of that. Uh, hello, Andre. Uh, hello, Tisha. Hey. How is everything? Yeah, well, everything's okay. All right. Tell you the truth, I'm kind of tired. So. I'm not, I don't know if I can really even handle this class. Um, look what I'm doing, Andrea. Uh, I'm drinking uh, an energy drink. As you can see, it's, it's supposed to make me smart. I, I need all the help I can get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, all right. It's, it, you know, I got to do what I got to do. This is a brain teaser class. All right, let me say hello. Whoa, where did everybody go? Uh, okay, uh, hello, Andre. Oh, Hi, nice to see you again, too. It's been a while. Good to, good to see you, have you back in class. Um, and hello, Heidi. Hi, Heidi. Hello. Hey. Heidi, are you good at brain teasers? Huh? And are you good at brain... <laughs> Huh? Are you <laughs> uh -huh. Are you good at brain teasers? At riddles? <laughs> See? See? The wrong class. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing English here. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so, hello, Ahmed. Hello, Ahmed. Welcome to the class. How are you? What? Okay. Um, okay. Hi, Ahmed. Anyway, what that was all about. Uh, hello, Elena. Welcome to hello, the class. Hello, Oakley. Hi, Elena. <laughs> How are you? Great, and you? All right, all right. I'm hanging in there. Uh, I'm trying to kick my brain into gear because we're going to have to figure out some brain teasers and riddles. Again, I'll repeat. Uh, really, I'm what I'm excited for is I want to hear some brain teasers and some riddles from you guys, hopefully. I'm hoping. So start thinking of some. I'll kick us off. I'll get us started here. I'm going to... I'm going to start off with some yeah, kind of, uh, maybe not easy, but intermediate level 
brain teasers. Uh, okay, let's see how see how you guys do here. Uh, all right, so get make uh, let you get the idea here. What's going on? Uh, okay, Andre, I'm gonna have you start first. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a screen share so you can actually read these. All right, so. You, can get a good idea. I've got some killer brain teasers coming up. So if you guys, somebody's really good at this, I'm going to challenge you. Um, if you even got a brain teaser by Plato, actually. Andre, uh, here you go. Uh, okay. Some, uh, some months go ahead. have, uh, some month, months have uh, 30 days and some have 31. How many months have 28 days. Yeah, well. Are you, what do you uh, think? Uh, I think that 12 months have, have 28 ah, days. All, all, one uh, every, every one month in the year. Very good. All right. Okay, that's the idea. A little bit tricky here. Okay, so that's it. Many people might think, uh, oh, you're just talking about February, but actually very good Andre you're absolutely correct give yourself a point is the, uh, excellent matter, is the a matter of semantic a matter of semantics exactly semantics. and that's what we're looking at Preci precisely you're absolutely correct okay uh, a couple others have joined the class hello Paco hello good afternoon Good evening to you. <laughs> There's a brain teaser. Where am I? Okay. Uh, all right. And I don't know. People are popping in and popping out so fast I can't even keep track of what's going on in here. Um, welcome to the class, Paco. We'll get to you in a minute. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you. Andrew. There's a lot of people with similar names. There we go. Yes, you. Uh, great. How many children does a man have if he has ten sons and each son has a do uh, has a sister? Twenty. Okay. What? Huh? Twenty. Twenty. How many children okay. does a man have if he has ten sons and each son has a sister? Wait a minute. Twenty, Andrew. Tess. Does anybody have a different answer? Eleven. Yeah, eleven. <laughs> yeah. yeah, eleven. Bunch of people. Yeah, the ladies say eleven. The ladies are right. Um, each son has a sister, but you only need one girl. He would still be oh. the sister to all ten sons. Okay. <laughs> tricky, tricky. Okay, Ahmed, are are you over there? I mean, are you here? Are you over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am clearly, here. Clearly, you over there, but are you here? Uh, okay, Ahmed, can you do me a favor and try and read this one for yeah. me? Uh, an Air France Boeing uh, 747 crashes on the uh, on the border between France uh, and Belgium. Uh, on board are 150 French people and 200 Belgians. Where are the survivors buried in France or in Belgium? Mm. Uh -huh. What do you think, Ahmed? Mm -hmm. Where are the survivors buried? In France or in Belgium? Yeah, we... Uh, the survivors not buried. Survivors. Okay, it took you a minute, Ahmed, but congratulations. All right, uh, you, you got it. Okay, excellent. You got it. You got it. Nice job. Nice job. Uh, hello, Anastasia. How are you? Welcome to the class. Hi. Yeah, hi, for you guys, I'm not Anastasia today. <laughs> oh, you're not. I'm not Anastasia today? Okay. 
Hi, hi, Oksana. How are you today? I thought because it was nighttime, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah. I have little, uh, not, not many time for to be in class half time. Okay. Uh, well, okay. Nice to have you in class. I'll get back to you in just a second. Uh, I'm gonna take it over to Alex now. Alex, are you? You're here, you appear to be here twice. Alex, you're here twice. Interesting. I don't know. <laughs> it's a puzzle. It's a brain teaser. How did Alex get in the room twice? Uh, okay, okay. Um, He's a clone. Uh, I am a woman. If uh, Sally's uh, daughter is my uh, daughter's uh, mother, what uh, uh, re relationship am I uh, to Sally? Um, one minute, please. <laughs> yeah. You need a pencil and paper? <laughs> Me too. Uh, okay. Is that right? Is it Somebody right? help me out here. Is it right? Is it right? I don't think it's right. Sally's. What's that, Paco? Uh, I think it's uh, her grandmother. Her grandmother. Sally's daughter. Yes, Sally's daughter is my daughter's mother. My daughter. Is it daughter? Oh, I think it's daughter. It's her daughter. It's her daughter. Her daughter, yes. Yes, it's her daughter. That's right, her. right answer. Your daughter, yeah. Yeah, that's a twisted yeah, circle. Okay. I, you know, I couldn't. I uh, understand. Yeah, that takes a minute for my brain to engage on that one. Uh, okay, Heidi. Heidi, yeah. are, are you there? Huh, mm -hmm. Okay, Heidi. Uh, number six. What about the highest mountain on uh, Earth, Earth before Mount Everest was discovered? Still Mount Everest. Okay, another one for you, Heidi. Heidi, I've got a couple. I've got a couple for you later. Don't you worry. Oh, yeah, There's, I've got a couple challenging, really challenging ones. Elena, Hello. can you try? Sorry. Somebody? Uh, no. Okay, Elena. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. If you had only one match and entered a dark room containing an oil lamp, a newspaper, and some <laughs> kindling wood, what would you light first? <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, Elena, there you are. In a dark room, imagine mm -hmm. the wind's blowing outside, <laughs> and it's thunder and raining outside. <laughs> okay, I um, mm -hmm. newspaper or some kind link wood. Yes. Uh, well, uh, no, <laughs> actually, no. This is pronounced kindling, by the way. Kindling. Yeah, what's yeah very kindling. Small. What? Yeah. Okay. But no, uh, does anybody else? Anybody? Uh, oh, yeah. Match. Match. Uh, match. Yeah, it's match, match, match. All of you who said match. It's only one choice, yeah? <laughs> Give yourself a point. Yeah, of course you have to light the match in order to set anything else on fire. Right, Elena? First the match, then anything else really will do. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, that was a little tricky. Uh, Paco, uh, number yes. eight. A farmer had seventeen sheep, or but nine died. 
499. How many did you have left? Uh, I'm thinking about uh, why is it tricky? <laughs> Maybe it's not. Eight. <laughs> See you. Uh, you. This is called overthinking, Paco. Mm -hmm. You have you have overthought the problem. Okay. If all but nine died, well, okay. How many did he have left? A anybody else? Nine. 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 Heidi was quick on that one. Yeah, and she's right. Andre, yeah. Yeah. Point. Okay. Nine. Yes. Ro robot voice. Yes, it is nine. <laughs> 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 Scary. Okay. All but nine died. Oh, Paco, that's in English you say overthinking. You're overthinking the problem. You're thinking too hard. It was easy. I, I know you knew it, but you, you just wanted to think much about it. Why why the answer is nine? Because all but nine died. Okay. So all but nine died. Only nine lived is what this sentence means. So nine died. lived. So how many no, did you have left means how many were alive. Uh huh. I didn't understand that uh, phrase. All but. Uh, uh, except. Uh, yes, all except nine died. Yes, thank you, Heidi. That's another way to think about it. Very good. Yes. That's right. Okay, well, uh, just, just, uh, yeah, 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 okay. Right, okay. Despite ourselves, we're going to learn a little English as well as have some fun. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Um, okay, uh, Oksana, how about number nine? Mm -hmm. Write this down as one number 15,000, 1515. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can, can you do that? Uh, I didn't understand <laughs> what you mean. <laughs> How can you write this down as one number? Actually, I don't understand this one either. <laughs> no, really. 2015. No, really, I don't either. Any Anybody? What, what would this number be? I don't get uh, this one either. Uh, 106,000. Uh, 60, 65. So you, one thousand six hundred sixty-five. Fifteen thousand. No, wouldn't it have to be sixteen? Th Maybe I'm wrong. Sixteen thousand five hundred and fifteen. Yes. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> I trick myself. I think that's right. Yeah, that's right. I don't like that one. Uh, okay. That one's crazy. All right. Sorry, Oksana. Let's see what we got here. No, no, Let's... sorry. I'm not math mathematics. <laughs> okay. Well, we, we've got some. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll get some good mathematical ones later. I'll share with you. <laughs> okay. Let's start over again. Who's still here? People jumping in and out here. Andre. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Try this one. Mr. Taylor's uh, Mr. Taylor's, uh, Mr. Taylor's ban uh, bungalow bungalow is decorated entirely in pink. Uh, your lamps, walls, carpets, on silent. Are all pink. What color are your stairs? Okay, and just a quick note: it's Mrs. Taylor's. 
and oh, her lamps, man. walls, carpets, and ceilings. Ceilings. Okay. Straight up, there's probably a ceiling over your head right now. All right. What color are your feet? What do you think? I, I, I think yeah, there is uh, not mentioned about the stairs, but I think uh, also in pink. Also in pink. I don't think so. Why do I not think so? Does anybody know? Yeah, I know. And this has to do with English. Yeah? Well, why is that? Uh, I think uh, color here, it, uh, yeah. I think color here, it's not color. It's uh, C O L O U R. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! <laughs> well, act, okay, Ahmed. That's uh, okay. That's quite an observation. All right. Mm -hmm. But C O L O U R is correct spelling in British English. American English, we spell it C O L O R. So this is actually this is okay. This is actually okay. That's not quite it, Ahmed. Sorry. Uh, and thank you for muting yourself. It's very strange noises coming from outside your house. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, anybody else? I think a bungalow. Uh, has some uh -huh. stairs. Ah, there we go. Very good. And that was interesting, but good English. Uh, a bungalow hasn't hasn't stairs. It hasn't got stairs. That's right. A bungalow is a one-story, one-floor house yeah. by definition. So there are no stairs. Okay. Uh, okay. This is one that for some reason confuses me every time. I'm not sure why. Um, all right. Uh, Andrew. Are you there? Take, yeah. take three apple, apples from five apples. How many do you have? Five? Three. <laughs> ah, three. Who said that, Oxana? I thought you weren't good at math. Okay. Teacher, please uh, take a smaller text. Uh, I don't see. Sorry? Uh, take a little smaller text. Sm small, small. Small? Uh, smaller? Yeah. You said uh, zoom, zoom, in, zoom out. Yeah, yeah. Out? Okay. All right. I can only do... Uh, all right. Well, no. All right. <laughs> you can't see it because it's too big first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. Good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <clears throat> okay. We just looked at 11. Take three apples from five apples. Now, it depends how you look at this. This confused me because every American math book uses this kind of example to show subtraction, and the answer is always two. So I find this completely incomprehensible. But I do understand that when we... We don't have a subject noun in a sentence. I do know English. I don't know math, but I do know English. We don't have a subject noun. That means that it is a command sentence, and the subject is assumed to be you. So if I say clean your room, it is assumed that there's a subject, you, since every sentence must have a subject. So, I can assume if you take three apples from five apples, then you have three apples, actually. So, Oksana, you're correct. See, you're better at 
math than you thought. Uh, very good. Uh, okay. Who's next? Uh, okay. Uh, Alex, are you are you are you in? Are you in? Are you out? Okay. Um, For twelve. Twelve, yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh my God! I don't see. Um. One minute, please. If uh, Mr. Wright uh, pair cock laid an egg in Mr. Blake's garden, who is the rightful owner of the egg? Um. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, cool connection. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> peacock, because it's Peacock. Mr. Blake. Yeah? No, not Mr. Oh, Blake. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Blake's garden. <laughs> Mr. Blake is down. <laughs> Uh, are you a lawyer? Elena's a lawyer. Elena, are you a lawyer? <laughs> no, no, I'm an architect. <laughs> what means uh, the word uh, peacock? Peacock. Yeah. Peacock. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's. Cock is built. <laughs> that. That. What's that, Oksana? What means peacock? It's its bird. It it's bird? a bird, yes. It is a bird, but uh, a peacock. Can it be is... laid an egg? No, probably not, Paco. Uh, a, pe <laughs> a peahen can lay an egg, all right? A peacock is the male, a peahen is the female, so uh -huh. there really should not be an egg here unless some <laughs> kind of. Crazy experiments are going on in Mr. Wright's laboratory, <laughs> which we don't want to know about. All right. Right. I answer Mr. Wright. Uh, yeah. I think maybe of the. Well, it should be a peahen. A peacock is a male bird, so that's the problem there. Uh, Okie dokie. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Ahmed, can you try number 13? Yeah. What do you set on, sleep on, and brush your teeth with? Uh, hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I knew this one and it just went out of my head. Uh, I can't get it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I know this, but suddenly I just blanked out. Does it? Okay, anybody else? Does anybody know this one? Mm -hmm. I think it should be something related with your body. <laughs> maybe, uh, or maybe not. Okay. Uh, uh, a comb? I don't know. Comb? Brush? Uh, okay. Maybe my hands. <laughs> your hands? You sit on your hands? Sleep on your hands? Uh... No, I can't think of the answer for this one, and I totally know this. Oh, I'm just blanking out. Uh oh, we're gonna have to think about that one. Who, okay, this is the magic one. Who can come up with this one? Get the gold star. All right. Oh, I can't think of what that one is. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. Keep thinking about that one. Maybe we'll come back to it. Heidi, yeah. how about number fourteen? How many times can you take four from the thirty-five? It's a rare mathematics. <laughs> I don't get this one either. Then eight. Yeah. Well, okay. Eight point two five. 
<laughs> I don't get this one either. Okay. Thirty-two. I, I think uh, no one, no one. You can't. Not evenly, of course. I don't get either one of these. All right. Uh, that's weird. And I know I know 13, too. All right. Uh, never mind. All right. Heidi, you want to try another one? That, that one was just stupid. Monday. Try another one. Yeah. Go ahead. To the car park. With, uh, without the benefit of moonlight or any artificial light. He was able to spot his black car 100 meters away. How was it possible to walk through? Uh, it's daytime. Yeah, that's it. It's daytime. Okay. <laughs> Very good. All right. Easy one. All right, uh, Elena, you know numbers. You're an architect. Go ahead, number 16. <laughs> Which is correct? Nine and seven is fifty. Fifteen. Uh, okay. <laughs> Nine and seven are fifteen. Nothing. <laughs> okay. <is> Why? Correct. <laughs> you are correct. Something is correct. You are correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because right. uh, it, it's not fifteen. Yes, and I would like to compliment you on your pronunciation of 15. Thank you. Please, everyone should do that. Please stress the second half of the word and pronounce it very cleanly and with a slight rise in pitch so that we can all tell the difference between 15 and 50. Got to be careful of that. Yes, I, I noticed. I noticed. <laughs> That's a good style in English. Um, okay. Uh, Paco. Yes? We're in number 17 here. If a woman was born in Italy, raised in Australia, married a Scotsman, living in England, then died in Italy. What is she? Uh, Italian? No. No. Anybody? What is she? A woman? This one I know. <laughs> Andre, do you know? No? Anybody? Nobody knows? I'll tell you what she is, Paco. She's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, indeed. Okay. All right. I still have, okay. I still going crazy about number thirteen. I still. What do you sit on, sleep on, and brush your teeth with? Anybody have any idea? What? I think you yourself. You're what? You yourself. Or me, myself. You, yourself. You sit on yourself? I don't sit on myself. <laughs> I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Since there is a word what, not who. Yeah, right. <coughs> okay. I don't know. I don't know. I'm very confused about that one. Okay. Now, that was, ladies and gentlemen, that was totally just warm up. Okay. Now... Now the real deal. Okay. Let me, uh, let me share this here with you. Okay, now, now the scary ones. All right. Here you go. All right. Oh, and look, Oksana, we're, we're back to you now. <laughs> okay. Oksana, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Read, read or, yeah, read I, this beautiful poem. You can do it. I sizzle like bacon. I am made with an egg. I have plenty of backbone, but not a good leg. I feel li liars like an onion, but still remain whole. 
I can be long like a flat hole, yet I fit in a hole. Okay. How I did it in this <laughs> what are you? Okay. The question is, what am I? What am I? All right. A sizzle like bacon. I made with an egg. I have plenty of backbone, but not a good leg. I peel layers like an onion, but still remain a hole. I can be long like a flagpole, yet I fit in a hole. All right. I don't have any idea. Who no idea who this no is. Idea. Okay, anyone? Anyone have an idea? Who is this? Puzzler. Who is this Riddler? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Who is it? Okay. Or really, what is it? What is this thing? It makes a sound like bacon. Let me see if I can give you hints. A little bit of a hint. Okay. It makes a sound like bacon. It comes from an egg. What am sure answer? It's got a pl plenty of backbone, but it doesn't have a leg. It is a snake. Aha! Very good. A snake mm. is the answer. Very good. All right. All right, Alex. You get two points. We're now in the two-point round. Okay. These are the two-point questions. All right. It's, it was Andrew. Oh, was it? Oh, Andrew. Good job. Good job. Sorry. I, could, I can't really tell who's speaking sometimes. All right. Let's try this next one. Oops. Andrew. Speaking of Andrew. Go ahead. Try this one. Looking at, looking at my face. Go ahead. Uh, uh, lo <coughs> looking at my face. I am not more than six. Look at, look at the rest of me, and I am 21. <coughs> you see my twin and uh, me in uh, Las Vegas. Say my name, and you, you'd be uttering a threat. Mm-hmm. Tough one. Tough uh, one. Tough one. Mm. Yeah. Okay. The kind of more idiomatic meanings of some of these words. A face is like the face of a clock. Okay, the front. Is sometimes the face, the face of a building, can be the front of a building. I know more than six. Look at the rest of me, and I'm 21. You'll see my twin in me in Las Vegas. There's a big clue. Okay. No, Andre, anybody have any idea? Who am I? Who could this be? What could, something uh, like card, like a poker or something, you know? No, that's, that's what I was thinking when I first saw this. Yeah, I, that's exactly what I was thinking, but no. You're on the right track, though, Heidi. What else comes in pairs in because Las Vegas? 21, though. The card, the card, card game. Some card game. That's right, but what else comes in pairs famously in Las Vegas? And I don't mean the showgirls. <laughs> <laughs> Get your minds out of the gutter, people. Okay. Uh, okay. On one face, maybe one side, maybe the front. Oh, it's no a, more it's, than six. It's a game. It's a, it's a game. Uh, game. Yeah. Uh, in the Las Vegas, it's a uh, um, uh, sorry. Uh, you, uh, you know it. Uh, I know you know we, it. Uh, when we make a bet, bets. Yes, yes, mm. you got it. Okay, and you roll them. It's a, it's a card card games. No, it's card. not a card game. <laughs> no. It's a roulette. It's not roulette. No. No, not at all. 
Okay. What are, uh, if you add oh, up all the so <laughs> not poker, okay. What object has six on one side, and if you add up every side, it equals 21? Nope, nope, nobody, nobody here shoots craps, huh? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, the answer, what am I? A die. Uh, one die is called a die. So if you utter my name, you'd be uttering a threat. Die. Uh, okay. Two die are called dice. And that's what you roll when you play blackjack. I mean, sorry, when you play roulette. I'm, God, now you guys got me doing it. When you play craps. All right. On one side is a six. On the opposite side is a seven. On uh, the on the six <laughs> sides of a cube. Okay. You have one, two, three, four, five, six. If you add them all up, twenty-one. There it is. Okay. Uh. Wow. Okay. Hang on. Let me give this a. All right. All right, what am I? Uh, okay, can you read this one for me? Uh, Alex. Yeah. Um, you can play me and pal me. I love uh, the knife. I am uh, enjoyable to give, but bad to receive. Uh, what? Uh, one minute. Please. <laughs> sure. Hmm. Crazy. What is this? I don't even think I can give you a clue. I forgot this one. You can play. Mm. Help me, classmates. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anybody have an idea? You can play me and pull me. I love the naive. I'm enjoyable to give, but bad to receive. No, no idea. Okay, I don't either. It's. Oh, a prank. Oh, nobody would have gotten that one. A prank. Oh. A prank. Okay. You can play a prank and pull a prank. Okay. A prank is a trick that you play on another person. I love the naive. People who are naive are easy to play prank on. Okay. Very good. Okay. I get that one. Uh, okay. Now. Okay. Here you go. If you get this one, I'm going to have to, I don't know, I'll bow in your general direction. This particular riddle is written by the philosopher Plato. So if you manage to get this one, you're pretty smart. It, this is quite elaborate. Uh, okay, Heidi, can you read this one, please? There's a story that a man and not a man saw so and did, did, not, did not see a bird and not a bird. Patched, patched on a branch and not a branch. And hit him and did not hit him. With a rock and not a rock. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Again, this is a riddle devised by Plato, the famous Greek philosopher. Wow. If anybody can get this, forget it. <laughs> I'll eat my hat, as we would say in English. I will be so astonished. I would eat my hat. It's crazy. It's so elaborate, the answer. Mm, not a brand. If you get this one, this would be... This would that's, be like, like bad. golf. Not bad. Oh, really? 
bird. What did you say? Bad. Bad if not bird. Uh, okay. Actually, <laughs> amazing. A bird and not a bird does refer to a bat. But this is a whole story, okay? One mm -hmm. element of the story is, in fact, a bat. Heidi, I'm pretty impressed. Okay. A bird and not a bird refers to a bat. So that's a, actually a big clue. Story of Batman. <laughs> Batman. No. Okay. If, if you got this one, this would be like Gollum guessing what's in the hobbits' pockets. Uh, what's it's got in its pockets? Okay. Never mind. You guys don't know. Okay. Hit with uh, bat, right? Well, how is this possible? Uh, okay, is the riddle. Well, here you go. Mm -hmm. A eunuch, okay, that's a man who's not a man, who did not see well, who could see but not see, saw a bat, there's your bird that's not a bird, perched on a reed, ah, okay, a tree that's a branch that's not a branch. A reed is a... Uh, slender like stick that sticks out of the out of a pond okay um, and through a pumice stone okay a pumice stone is a lava rock it has lots of holes in it sometimes considered a rock but not a rock a pumice rock at him which missed okay hit him and did not hit him I don't get that part he didn't hit him all right. Okay. Anyway. Oh, this one I, I knew. This one I could figure out. Maybe you can. Okay. So here it is. A man. All right. Well, let somebody read this. Why am I doing the work? Uh, okay. Elena, can you read this one? A man is found dead in a phone booth in a pool. Mm -hmm. Uh, hang on. There you go. In a pool of blood. The glass on either end of the phone booth is broken and the phone is hanging. Just outside of the phone booth is a bucket and a stick. <laughs> okay. okay, what's going on, Helena? What happened? <laughs> this is a... Murder mystery. What happened? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Okay, I'll add another clue. He, he it's the phone booth is near the ocean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. like <laughs> it tells me a lot. Big help. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The the first time I saw this. It was, Slightly different. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, well, how about this? All right, the phone booth is near the ocean, and also the stick turned is not really a stick. It's a fishing pole. Hmm. Does that help? No. Can, can anybody not. get it with that genius hint? Okay, a man is found dead in a phone booth. So he's okay. the The phone is hanging, so he's making a call. All right, he's in a pool of blood. All right, he bled to death. The glass on either end of the phone booth is broken. Here's the big hint: just outside the phone booth is a bucket. And a stick, not a stick, but a fishing pole. No. Stick. Okay, let me explain it with a visual. Imagine, if you will, I'm a fisherman, and I just come back from the ocean, and I'm so excited. I I call my wife. I say, honey, honey, you wouldn't believe it. I was out there all by myself, and I caught a fish this big. Wow! 
And as I spread my arms, I smash the glass on either side, cut the arteries in my arms, bleed to death, fall in a pool of blood, and die. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> oh, my God. Does anybody, anybody here have a riddle you'd like to share with the class? Anybody? Any volunteers? No? Come on. I have more, but I, I'd love to hear yours. Anybody please interrupt are you, me. Are you implying... Uh, Sorry? Uh, so, uh, are, you, are you implying that uh, there on the beach there is a uh, phone, phone box? Yes, I am. It's a phone box. That's right. I am implying that. <laughs> hey, it happens in the United States. I've seen it. And, uh, uh, I don't know about the elsewhere. The beach is there uh, something unusual? Yeah, well, it could be close to the beach on the walkway by the on the boardwalk by the beach. But okay, all right. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, here's a tough one you, well, you may be able to get. Um, okay, here I have a list of things that have something to do with each other. All right, I'm going to up front give you a little bit of a clue. This is a list of things, and they all have something to do with each other. They all definitely belong in the same group. Okay, a, a smooth dance, a ball sport, a place to stay, an Asian country, and a girl's name. What's her name? Vietnam. Vietnam. <laughs> no. Okay. I, I, I know. What, what's her name? What's her name? Okay. Uh, okay. Let me give you a clue. A smooth dance. A smooth dance is called a foxtrot. Right? An example of a smooth dance is foxtrot. A place to stay, hotel. Where do you see these words, hotel and foxtrot? India. Yeah. India. India? Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Maybe you're on the right track. I can't remember the ball sport. I don't it. know ball sport uh, like Asian country. <laughs> okay. India, India's right. You know what those ah, things have? Indian uh, right answer, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the girl's name. I guess. <laughs> okay. Well, think about what these, if a, think about this. If a smooth dance is a foxtrot, what if that represents F? Foxtrot, hotel, India. Where do you hear those things listed together? No? No idea? Okay. Uh, all right. All of these things are listed as part of the NATO phonetic alphabet. Foxtrot, golf, hotel, India, and finally Juliet. These are the NATO letters that the, they use to spell things. Okay. Like uh, whatever. Planes and submarines and such. Mm. Okay, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie. Okay, like Delta. Uh, okay. All right, they're 
They're all that. They're all NATO alphabet things. Uh, okay. Several, several answers. Yeah. Okay, here's a weird one. All right. Here's a weird one. Here's a math one. Uh, Oksana will get this. <laughs> okay, Oksana, you have two coconuts. <laughs> and you want to find how high they can be dropped from a 100-story building before they break, but you only have a dollar forty, and the elevator costs a dime each. A dime is ten cents, so you only have fourteen dimes. Elevator costs a dime each time you ride it up. It's free to ride down, but you can only ride it up once. I mean, it costs ten cents every time. How can you drop the coconuts to guarantee you will find the lowest floor they will break at? Well, starting and ending at floor number one. There you go. There's a math problem for you. <laughs> See if you can figure that one out. Good luck. Get yourself some paper. Get a calculator. <coughs> How are you going to do that? There's 100 floors. You're trying to figure out what is the lowest floor that the coconuts will drop, that uh, the coconut will, a coconut will break. All right, you only have two coconuts, though. The first floor. Yeah, you have to start at the first floor. But, of course, you can always come back down to the first floor, and that's free. And you're going to start at the first floor anyway. So the ending is not hard. If it is uh, ground floor, uh, then... Where'd you go? Okay. This is a tough one now. Okay. They break when dropped from the same height and they don't weaken from getting dropped. That's the premise. All right. So make a note of that. If you get one to break, you know exactly how far. So, geez. I only need a dime. <laughs> I don't get it. Go to the top of the building and just go down every floor. <laughs> but of course, then you, you're, you're trying to figure out what is the minimum floor that they'll drop out. That wouldn't work because I dropped my first one from the 100th floor, and of course it'll break, so now I have no idea what is the maximum floor. Is that, can anybody? You can use a staircase. Uh, okay. Yeah, it could be quite a hike for you. All right. Okay. Let's check it out. Let's see. All right. You could drop it at floor one first because you started floor one. All right. Great. Then you would go to floors 14, 27, 39. Why? Multiples of 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. Oh, look at that. All right. Well, this is weird. Why? Whatever floor your first coconut breaks at, go to the floor above and the last floor. Not numbers. No, no. Okay. Wait a minute. Whatever floor your first coconut breaks at, go to the floor above the last floor the coconut survived and drop the second coconut from this floor. Then go up by one floor until the second coconut breaks and that is the lowest floor. Ah, I get it. So you just keep going up, right? So you only have 14 to start. You go to the 14th floor. You have 13 left, so you add 13. Right, then you add 12, then you add 11, then you add 10. Okay, because each time you go back up again, you deduct a dime. I get it. It's actually not, it's actually not even, oh, sure. That's actually quite logical. Okay, um, enough. That nonsense. Okay, enough craziness. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for challenging yourself.
Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye